If you're thinking about celebrating Thanksgiving this year, here are a few facts that you probably did not know. We will be first discussing the definitions, the history, and where Thanksgiving really originates from so we can get a better understanding of why it's celebrated in America today. Now, according to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, Thanksgiving Day is, quote, a day appointed for giving thanks for divine goodness as the fourth Thursday in November observed as a legal holiday and the United States and the second Monday in October observed as a legal holiday in Canada. But according to the American Heritage Dictionary, Thanksgiving is defined as the fourth Thursday of November observed as a legal holiday in the United States to commemorate the feast held in 1621 by the Pilgrim colonists and members of the Wampanoag people and marked by the expression of gratitude for harvest and health as well as the second Monday of October celebrated in Canada by the expression of gratitude for harvest and health. But what is the real truth about Thanksgiving and why is it celebrated today? Although commonly taught in history books that the first Thanksgiving was observed as of 1621 when the pilgrims first arrived at Plymouth, Massachusetts and gathered with the Wampanoag Native Americans and Indians who were there in order to celebrate a fall harvest celebration, there is much to the story that is not told in the history textbooks. While today's tradition commonly teaches that Thanksgiving is all about giving thanks for friends and family and food and fun, the original celebration and commemoration had nothing to do with this definition whatsoever. In 1621, pilgrims had built crude huts in a common house on the shores of Plymouth Bay. Soon, neighboring Indians began to build relations with the pilgrims. The Squanto, who are a local Indian who had been kidnapped and taken to England nearly a decade before, served as an interpreter with the local tribes. Squanto taught the pilgrims to fertilize the soil with dried fish remains to produce a stellar corn crop. The Massasoit, who is the chief of the nearby Wampanoags, signed a treaty of alliance with the pilgrims in the summer of 1621. And in exchange for assistance with defense against the feared Narragansett tribe, the Massasoit supplemented the food supply of the pilgrims for the first few years, and this is according to U.S. history. However, during this time, the pilgrims also brought along their diseases and plagued the native peoples and the Native Americans during that time, thereby commemorating the genocide of millions of Native Americans. Within 20 years after the arrival of the pilgrims, many of the Native Americans had their land stolen, disease were plagued upon them, and were horribly killed indeed. And also in the 1620s, William Bradford, who was the governor of Plymouth at the time, has reported in his book, History of Plymouth Plantation, that the colonists went hungry for years because they refused to work in the field. They preferred instead to steal food. He says that the colony was riddled with corruption and with confusion and discontent. The crops were small because much was stolen both by night and day before it became scarce eatable. But even peace treaties did not keep the peace between the European settlers and the native peoples of America during that time because John Winthrop, who became the governor of Massachusetts Bay Colony during the time of the Pequot Wars of 1636 to 1638, in the year 1637, he made the decree and declared that a day of thanksgiving, thanking God that they had eliminated over 700 men, women, and children was then signed into law that, quote, this day forth shall be a day of celebration and thanksgiving for subduing the Pequots. It was during the Pequot Wars of 1637 that the first official thanksgiving became to be known in America and was subsequently celebrated for hundreds and hundreds of years. And also William B. Newell, who is a Penobscot Indian and former chairman of the Anthropology Department at the University of Connecticut, has even stated, quote, gathered in this place of meeting, they were attacked by mercenaries in English and Dutch. The Indians were ordered from 
stormed the building and as they came forth were shot down, the rest were burned alive in the building. The very next day, the governor declared a Thanksgiving day and the governor that this is talking about is John Winthrop which is where you get the building blocks of Thanksgiving Day. But then it goes on to say, for the next hundred years, every Thanksgiving Day ordained by a governor was in honor of the bloody victory, thanking God that the battle had been won by the European settlers and not by the native Indians. When you fast forward to the time after the Civil War, it was Abraham Lincoln who finally officiated Thanksgiving Day to become a national holiday in America on the fourth Thursday in November. And the origin of this day being chosen comes from the woman by the name of Sarah Hale, who's also commonly known as the mother of Thanksgiving during the time of Abraham Lincoln. And she's also the author of the commonly known nursery rhyme, Mary Had a Little lamb and she said quote the last thursday in november was suggested because then the agricultural labors of the year are generally completed the elections are over those autumnal diseases which usually prevail more or less at the south have ceased and the summer wanders are gathered to their home so in short, Thanksgiving commemorates the murder and slaughter of millions of Native Americans, which is also why it's known as a national day of mourning for many Native Americans, known as the fourth Thursday in November. But what about all of the food that's commonly eaten on Thanksgiving? What about the origins of the food? And was this celebrate also known as something else in other traditions? For thousands of years, festivals for giving thanks have been taking place in many locations worldwide. In ancient Greece, when the underworld god Hades abducted the young maiden Persephone, her mother Demeter would not feed the world and winter came upon the land. When Persephone was restored, an elated Demeter gave the gift of agriculture to mankind. The Greeks believed that because of her, the earth provided the bounty that it did. Honoring her with offsprings and ceremonies would promise a new and fresh harvest each year. The holiday dedicated to Demeter was called Thesmophoria. Demeter was also called Thesmophoros because she gave certain Thesmoi laws to mankind. The festival Thesmophoria was held in the fall during a month known as Pionopsian. It occurred between October and November in the same months as the Canadian and United States Thanksgivings. The Thesmophoria were the most widespread festivals and the main expression of the cult of Demeter aside from the Aleutian mysteries. During this three-day festival, men were not allowed to celebrate or attend whatsoever. It was all women. And during the three days, this is what occurred. Day one was commonly known as Anodos or the Ascent in which women set up camp in order to honor Demeter, the god of agriculture in Greek mythology. And then day two was commonly known as the fast in which women mocked each other. And then day three was also known as Caligenia, which is also known as fair offspring. And during this time was the torch lit ceremony. What about all of the cornucopias and the food that is commonly associated with Thanksgiving? Surely all of this has a pagan origin as well. Because what you may not have known about cornucopia is that it actually means the horn of plenty, but it is also commonly associated in Greek mythology because it's also known as the horn of Almaltea, which is the goat who suckled Zeus, also known as the horned cow goddess Isis, commonly known as Demeter in the Greek culture, or also known as Easter today. And so the cornucopia gives homage to the Greek goddess demeanor and represents horn of plenty as well as agriculture and harvest. In ancient Rome, corn represents Ceres, who is also known as the corn goddess of agriculture and crops. The turkey itself symbolizes mother earth and harvesting along with rebirth, agriculture and fertility. The pumpkin was a commonly used symbol to denote sun worship in ancient tradition. 
And you're probably wondering where the food stuffing originates from and why it's even called stuffing. Well, when the ancient Romans, what they would do is they would stuff animals inside one another and eat them all. So they would stuff chicken inside of a duck and then the duck inside a goose and then the goose inside a pig and a pig inside a cow and they would cook the whole thing all together, hence the word stuffing. We see overall Thanksgiving pays homage to pagan deities, Greek, Roman, and even Celtic ones and is very abominable indeed because it's also deeply rooted and tied to Mabon, which is a Wiccan celebration during the fall equinox which encourages pagans to reap what they sow, not to mention Lug Nasad, which is the first harvest of the Gaelic festival that honors Lug, which is a Celtic sun idol. We also know some of the abominable foods that are also associated with Thanksgiving including but not limited to pork, Thanksgiving ham, and even sausage and stuffing because the word of our father in the book of Leviticus or by Ikra chapter 11 and Dabarim in Deuteronomy chapter 14 tells us that these foods are abominable indeed. As well as Leviticus chapter 23 telling us the feast days that our Father tells us to celebrate and Thanksgiving is not one of them, therefore making it a hell a day indeed. And Yarmyahu Jeremiah chapter 10 tells us that we are not to learn the way of the heathen whatsoever. The next time you're thinking about celebrating Thanksgiving, you'll know all of the reasons why you should not celebrate this hell day whatsoever. And as always, please remember to seek Yahuwah and his true son Yahusha for even more truth. But this is Truth Unveiled here saying Shalom.